So, yes, my name is Yves Callens, and uh, yes, sorry, being the last presenter, and you will have to learn about, to, to, to discuss a bit about lean. I think it's a bit heavy after two days, huh? so we'll see. I hope you will still survive to this one. A um, few things about me. So I started working at Toyota in 2004, already 16 years. I'm currently the IT responsible for the after-sales applications across Europe. And then I have some, some, of, um, uh, some of hobbies. That's, that's what I do for my work, but all the rest are kind of my hobbies. So I'm uh, one of the co-authors of the Toyota Global Agile book that we uh, edited first time in 2019 and also participating to the uh, Toyota Global Agile uh, transformation. I'm part of uh, a group with two friends, uh, Stein and Geert uh, of Beyond. And what we do there uh, since, since a year is we try to see what we can do with, uh, what we can learn from neuro neuroscience and neuro neuroleadership component about change, but also how it can help within, within agile adoption and uh, also within lean. Since uh, 2017, I'm giving the uh, Lean IT module in uh, ECAM, which is uh, linked to the Strasbourg University together with, uh, with Pierre Massé. And I went to a less training. And you know what? I learned many good things there. And I had some, some very good haha moments. And one of those aha moments, I said, when Bas proposed me to, to come here, I said, yes, in fact, that's exactly the things I want to say about it. So we, we'll, we'll go through it, and you will recon we'll recognize things, things from less there. And something completely different, but in 2009, I have um, a degree in analogy. And in 2009, with some friends, we created a BioVitis uh, association to promote organic wines. And the reason for that, which is a bit completely strange, <laughs> honestly, the reason for that is uh, we, we realized that uh, one third of the pesticides that were bought in France were used on the grapes. And we said, yeah, we, we like doing white testing and these kind of things, but uh, there are better ways to do pleasure of wine testing and, and uh, being respectful for, for the environment. So that's, that's the reason why we do that. So that was about me. So what we will not see today, I promise we will not see that, Black and white picture from the last century, we will not see. Uh, I guess the second thing, the house, lean house, TPS house, you all know that, so we will not see that. And you see those six fantastic uh, belts, and I, I really like the, the fifth one with the sheriff one, you know? The, the, in fact, those are the six sigma belt, for, for those that don't want. Um, I wonder why people would like to go to the blue one, because the, the sheriff one is so, so, so nice. So that we will not have a look to that neither. Um, lean. The modeling that I really like of Lean is the one you have behind me. Uh, it's not because it's coming from Pierre Massé, which, did, uh, which created this Lean ontology. Uh, and it's my former CIO at Toyota Motor Europe. He now moved to, to, to Japan, working at Toyota Systems. And uh, I must say, not that he's not my CIO anymore, I can say it. Um, so this was really, um, let's say, a discovery, a rediscovery about lean concepts. So lean is, not, is, is kind of organic. This is not like the house. We've seen something very strict, very structured. No, no, this is different, different concepts, different elements that interact between each other. And uh, if we come back to uh, Six Sigma, yeah, Six Sigma is one of the bullets which is there. So when you do that, the chance that you miss all the other points is very high. But that was a bit complex, so let me explain uh, what I do understand from that, and very in a nutshell, so that we all go from the same understanding. So for me in Lean, in Lean there are two things that are first. First thing in Lean is safety. Uh, of course it's physical safety. And one of the other things we mentioned, I don't know how many times to, today and yesterday, is also psychological safety. Is honestly, how as an individual I can focus on my customer if I do not feel safe? 
it's just not possible. Yesterday in the uh, Belarus uh, uh, Panda uh, book presentation, we've seen the, the performance of the team just dropping down after election. People not feeling safe, have difficulties to focus on their customer. And so, of course, the second thing that is first in Lean is customer. Then in Lean, there are two things that we do in time, just and stop. So just in time, it's about, um, I want to deliver with the smallest lead time possible to my customer. So the, the time between my customer demand and the product that I give to the customer is as short as possible. If you think, just one example, if you think about Toyota selling more or less 10 million vehicles a year, which means more or less 10 million customers a year, it's very difficult to anticipate what the customer wants. If you know that every model has something like between 10,000 and 30,000 different variances, it's just, it's just impossible. So the only way you can respect your customer and respect the customer demand is to shorten the lead time. So just in time is, is very important. And then the other element is stop in time. So stop in time, and if we take that in Japanese, and the Japanese concept is jidoka, so jidoka, stop in time, is what, do, do we, what can we do to automate what we are capable to do today, but which has low added value, so that we can spend our time for more added value activities. That's the stop in time. And then we have those two fundamentals, continuous improvement and visualization. And in Lean, we make things and people. So making people, ito tsukuri, making things, mono tsukuri. Very linked to, to each other. If um, okay, everything that you do, even in product dev development, you need people to do that. So if you do not, in a way, make your people, how will they be able to make the things you want them to do? So those, those two concepts are very close to each other. And what we want to achieve, of course, is stakeholder satisfaction. And when we say stakeholder, it's not only shareholders, it's not only customer, it's also employees, it's also your community, your country, the environment, all those elements are part of your stakeholders. There is one figure, which for me is in the center of Lean. It's, it's the people, it's the person. So without persons behind this, it doesn't work. And obviously the focus that we have today is how do we make, how can we make people? So Itotsukuri, making people. It feels a bit strange. And uh, yesterday, but Greg is, is gone, but yesterday he, he told me, um, are you really going to talk about making babies? I said, no, <laughs> it's, not, it's not what I mean by making people. Um, so before I go really more into the details about making people, I did some very hard research, you will see. Um, and I said, OK, what's? What's the room that people are taking within companies? How do we consider people within inside companies? So, yeah, format has changed a bit by changing computers, but that's fine. Um, and because you all really need it, I will just help your brain. Um, so, the first article that I found is one article from 2017, banking sector. One bank says, we want to transform. We want to do an agile transformation. And why do we want to do this agile transformation? It's because we believe that we can achieve 30% more productivity of our resources, of our people. 30% more. Which means we lay, lay off 30% of our employees. Fantastic. And that will result in a better cost-income ratio of target 50% instead of 56%. Which means that then as an employee, wh what are you? You are a resource that has to give a certain amount of productivity 
because you are a cost for your company. And so that's how you are considered. You see, I've, I've removed all names of companies. Huh? The second uh, article, it was in the beginning of uh, 2020, and it's another type of uh, uh, transformation, which is a transformation into the telecom environment. Ah, yes, thank you. So, telecom environment, and there they said, yes, uh, our environment is changing. We need to go to a more digital world. And so we need to transform our company to have more digital skills. So what we will do is uh, we will lay off 1,300 something employees. And then we will hire 1,200 1, something employees with a different skill set. Which means that as an employee, as a person, you have a certain skill set that can become obsolete. So in one year, two years, five years, ten years, what you know today is not, it has no value anymore for the company you're, you're in. So I was wondering, okay, and then what about Toyota? And then that's an article, an interview of Akio Toyota, which is the current CEO of Toyota. And um, what is interesting with this interview is it has been made mid of April this year. So at the moment of the interview, uh, most of the Toyota factory was closed. All the retailers were closed. So Toyota was not earning any money, not producing any car, and having the cost going to very high. And what IQ Toyota said, that person being responsible for something like 300 70,000 employees, which is not a small amount. He said, for us, people are our asset. And so reacting to the fact that some other manufacturer had to lay off a big uh, amount of people, he said, no, no, uh, those are our assets, and we need them, because they, they own the knowledge. And those are the persons that will be able and capable to provide us the necessary Kaizen so that after this crisis, we'll be even better because we have had time to do some improvement and then we can catch back. And Toyota is also doing a transformation. In 2018, in the sales of Las Vegas, IQ Toyota says, okay, my goal is to transition Toyota from an automobile company into a mobility company, which is a huge change in what we were, able, in what we were doing before. And it results in some, some new brands for Toyota, like Kinto, which is mobility uh, brand for, for Toyota, like uh, the Woven City, where uh, every new technology is going to be tried in real life, in a real city. So also Toyota connected. So it means many new things within the company. It's a huge change. But how the intention is to go there is to use what I mentioned before, stop in time, Jidoka. So trying to remove or to do more efficiently the things that we could do before so that we can flip the time of some people to do more added value activities. And then I thought about less. And yeah, this is coming from the newsletter. So Bas, I, I'm the guy that was reading the newsletter from till the, till the end, the full newsletter. <laughs> so I'm not reading the agile, uh, the, uh, the Scrum Guide, but uh, the less new newsletter. Uh, and so in less newsletter, what you have is uh, you have one of the design principles that says, oh, we should go from resource thinking to people thinking. When I came to the last training, one of my really haha moments was when Bas was saying, you know, learning is part of the value added activity that you do. And it's as important as product delivery. 
okay, if you only do learning and never pr deliver projects, probably there is also a problem. But that's the idea. It's, it's what you learn, and when you grow as a team or as a person, you also grow the company. And so, individuals are persons that are capable to acquire new skills, knowledge, and uh, which causes discomfort, of course, because you have to go outside of your, what you commonly say, the comfort zone, um, but also joy. Because after that, after having done that, then you are quite happy. Happy as an individual, but after that also happy as a team. So if I go back to Ito Tsukuri and making people, uh, and that's an extract from the, from the ontology, said, okay, this is, it has two methods, coaching, job rotation. It helps to develop respect for people and teamwork, and also it encourages challenges. This is very a summarized way of the things. And it's not m mean to be perfect, just this is, this is the basic. And obviously coaching, everyone knows about coaching. But I think one of the elements which, was, which is quite specific at Toyota is uh, job rotation. So job rotation is, is really an institution at Toyota. So every year, there is a job, job rotation fair where you go, you have all the departments presenting what's the open positions, and people can go, join, discuss, and, and ask for job rotation. Um, people can also rotate then from one department to another department, and then come back. You can rotate from uh, Toyota Motor Europe towards a national company, and go to Italy, Spain, Russia, and then come back. And you can also go from one region to another region. You can go to US, to, to US, you can go to Japan, and then having people from US and Japan coming and then, and then come back. So it happens all the time, yeah. So how do you look at, how do you look at uh, uh, the, the, the stability of the teams in less, uh, you probably know? That, uh, I'll answer later. Okay. So I was wondering, what, what about, because these this are what I mentioned about job rotation, those are kind of major rotations. So I said, uh, what about me? I stayed in IS all the time. So I was going backwards into the years, and you don't have to read that. It's not so interesting. Uh, and then I said, OK, I work on retailer type of systems, and then I moved to vehicle sales type of systems applications, and then I moved to after sales uh, area. In parallel, I did some, some scrum things, some piloting, trainings, uh, some lean IT. So every time, those are small steps, but every time I did change. And out of that, I also learned a few things. And you know, when Bas asked me to do this presentation, he said, you can do that presentation, but I want to see at least five Japanese words. So I did. <laughs> so, and I will give some, some, uh, some um, examples of, of some learnings that I could have made about Kaizen, Murimu Hamuda, and Genshin Gubutsu. What about Kaizen? So I've seen within Toyota some, some teams where uh, Kaizen is part of their annual objective. So you, get, you do Kaizen, you get a bonus. You don't do Kaizen, you don't go, get a bonus. Easy. And when you think about Kaizen, most of the people start to think, oh, yes, I have a great idea. I should change that system because of this or that, and it will improve the, the, the performance or whatever. So most of the Kaizen end up to come to a system change. And when you start to change a system, for a specific case, uh, you complexify the system. And uh, so step by step, years after years, for very good reason or for very bad reason, what happened is you start to get lots of Kaizen implemented, lots of process changes, complexification of, of your process, and then at the end, no one understands the process anymore. So people 
there are so many exceptions inside your processes that there, there is not the possibility to get, to get an overall view on all the processes that are in the system. It also means that there are so many exceptions inside your system that the performance becomes to be uh, dramatic, that every new change costs a lot more because it's extended and extended. And obviously, uh, when you want to change technology, it's even more complex because it's a big thing to do. Then I've seen other team where we had, we had a system which was used by different countries. And what we did there is uh, we said, OK, every three months, we got together and we explained each other the Kaizen we want to put into the system. We explain, we get challenged, and, uh, and we try to convince other countries to think that our Kaizen is a good idea so that they can, they can use it. And if we manage to have a very good idea that many people can use, then we share the cost, and also we increase the benefits of those Kaizen. And that kind of work, because then you have a backlog which is properly prioritized with the highest added value items first. And all these small kind of Kaizen which are nice to have for a dedicated person in a dedicated country, they go down the, down the list and they disappear. You never do them. So Kaizen needs to be collective, and you can be as smart as you want, but Kaizen, personal Kaizen, there will always be a problem. Then let's talk about Muri Mura Muda. So Muri, uh, overburden, Mura, unevenness, and Muda, waste. In, uh, it's quite a time already, in December 2013, I became, I joined a support team. And uh, there were five people in that support team. And if you can look at the graph, in December, yeah, there was 110 open incidents every single day for that support team, which makes 22 open incidents per person. Uh, I can call that overburden. So the team was completely stressed. Could not perform good activity, very bad uh, customer review. Uh, and on top of that, uh, they had some obligations to uh, do some extra report because they were late of delivery, uh, the, the, the tickets that they had to deliver. So I asked them to stop for a few moments. I said, OK, let, let's, do, uh, let's do what we do at Toyota, which is called TBP, Toyota Business Practices. And let's reflect on what's, what's, what's the problem. That when we do a TBP, the first thing we do is what is our goal? What is our target? And we say, OK, ultimate goal, easy. I don't want any open incident, zero. That's the ultimate. But it's not realistic. And I said, OK, what will be a decent target when you say, and don't look at the current situation, but what will say, with that, I think we're good. And I said, yes, if we will have two open incidents at the end of every day per team member, that will be good. That's it, so we have our target. Our target, we were five, so 10 open incidents. So let's, now let's try to identify what we can do to work towards the target. And in the beginning, you see the tr three first months, okay, we go to 60 open incidents. It's very easy. We tackle the issues that are within the teams, and, and we manage to, to improve some of our processes. And then, if I would have gone to my management like that, they would say, oh, fantastic, you did a great job. And I said, no, I didn't do a great job. My target is 10. So let's continue. And then we started to touch more difficult com components, like we needed some uh, system changes. We had to talk with different stakeholders, change the, the mentality, change the way of working, change some process and some procedures. And that took time. So after five months of kind of stability, it paid off, and we had a drop. So from August 2014, we were around uh, 20 open incidents. And then we continued to work on. And when I left the team, we had 11 open incidents. And so I wonder, yeah, but what, 
while we're preparing here, I said, hey, what, what is the situation today? The team still exists six years after. Of course, all team members changed. It's not the same person anymore. But they kept that KPI, and they were at nine open incidents. So it means, OK, you can change. There are things that you can change. You can fundamentally change by adapting some processing, but also adapting things that, that works. That's for the overburden. And then when we look at Mura and Muda, when you're in support, the Mura, the unevenness, is not really something that you control. You will have peaks, you will have downs. That's, it depends on the user, the usage of the system, and the different incidents that may appear in the system. But from August, Augustus onward, uh, what, what happened is the, um, the team only had 20 open incidents only four by team member. They realized that had, they had a bit of time, extra. So they started to do some development and, and propose some Kaizen, which at the end pay off, because then you start to reduce some fundamental problems, some technical debt of your application, and you reduce the amount of incidents. So let's go to uh, Genshin Genbutsu. Genshin Genbutsu means uh, go and see. And so in 2005, I was uh, working on retail platform, and there was um, European uh, reform, uh, new legislation coming in. And, um, and we said uh, from, from TME side, OK, we need to, to, to have a change in the past, create a new platform in order to, uh, to adapt to that change. And so we visited the, all the different countries. We implemented the solution. Uh, big success. Everyone was participating to that. And after three years, we just switched off the platform. And the reason why we switched off the platform is because no one was using it. And why no one was using it is because the assumptions we took by building this platform were wrong. And in fact, we have seen a problem where there was no problem. And then when we reflect on that, we said, yeah, but what did we do? We went there and we sell a product to our countries. We just sell a product. We were there seen as the expert of TME saying, we we're going to have a problem. You need to do that. People do that. That's it. That's what happens. In 2017, all the systems about the uh, technical documentation system. And uh, so that's, that's the system which is used in every single retailer to repair and maintain cars. So 36 countries. And uh, the situation of that system was that uh, every single week, we had a customer impacting incident. The only question was, will that be for a few minutes, or for a few hours, or sometimes a bit more? But every single week, we were impacting customers. And then, and that's, that's the picture you see there. So we went to some retailers, and that's a retailer in uh, in UK next to London. And we entered the retailership. Then you see all the cars in the showroom. You see the customer waiting for their car. Then we went uh, with the owner of the retailer. We, we show a bit the, the, the change that they wanted to do on the system. And then we went to the workshop. And in the workshop, there were some, some cars with the, the computer plugged in and the system, some diagnostic tool running. And one of the diagnostic tools was taking eight minutes. And uh, after seven minutes, internet connection dropped. It had to be restarted. So the, the technician restarted the diagnostic. After six minutes, internet connection dropped. It had to restart. And so what happens in the meantime is you see the parking, there is no free space. So people start to pile up cars because new customers were coming in for maintenance. Other customers were still there. And in fact, uh, every customer which, which was entering just took his mobile phone, laptop, and started to do something else, watching movies. And, and the more customers they were waiting, the less Wi-Fi were in the workshop. So the less internet connection we had to the workshop. And 
Of course, this is not in Toyota standard. They said, no, you have, should have different network for, for your customers. And the retailer guy said, yeah, but Andre, this is our reality. So you can, you can look from, from, from outside and say, yeah, the retailer, they will do that, that, that. And, but if, you do not, if you're not there and you don't see the angry face of the customer waiting since uh, one hour for his car, which is never coming, and being proposed to come next day because they didn't finish the diagnostic, okay, then you don't understand what's going to happen. And then having your developers with you, seeing that, they say, hey, the new system, first, no diagnostic tool more than four minutes, that's, uh, that's the maximum. And second thing, everything possible, if it drops internet connection, you can restart as the moment the, the connection comes back. Those are, those are very basic things that you will think, yeah, of course you should do that. But you don't always think about that. So, looking for facts is really Genshin Yubutsu. And uh, when, while talking about yeah, experts, that's, that's why I say in the, the things I don't want to talk about today, about Six Sigma, is, uh, is, is you don't want to build expertise so that people listen just to those experts and forget that, in fact, the experts are themselves. You, you are the expert of the job you do. You know better what, what type of job you are doing. And you, so you can give the best advice to someone else. The only thing is sometimes you don't know how to formulate because you don't know how that someone else needs to have that information. Small thing about no leadership. Very small. So, very, very interesting slide. No change without discomfort. When, when you propose a change, so when you have to go for, for learning something new, to change position or to do job rotation, for example, the first thing your brain will do is, it will say, oh no, I don't want to do that. Why? Because this will consume me so much energy. Everything you do something new, the brain is not predisposed it's really lazy. Your brain is something very lazy. And so it likes to have already preconceived or pre-connected wire. But if you do something new, it has to use lots of energy just to concentrate on the things you're doing because it never did it before. But if you don't do that, if you don't do this extra energy, the brain will never understand that it has to build new connections and that this change becomes a new habit. Step by step, it will not be done in just one day, but you have to practice and then it becomes a new habit. And then the brain can go again into a lower energy mode. But like uh, Magnus said yesterday also, very clearly, it needs to happen in a safe place. If it doesn't happen in a safe place, what happens is the change comes as a threat. And then, then you, don't, you are not at all anymore in a change mode or change friendly uh, environment, but it's, it's completely you're against the change that is coming. And I've seen so many uh, examples of the way we present change to people, make them go directly to the threat without trying to understand how they can help and how the change can help them. Conclusion, two conclusions. I will say, so lean is very something which is cultural Toyota, and it doesn't make agile easy for us, not at all. And the second element is lean, and lean in IT is for me like, and that's the reason of, of the title, Toyota Secret, which makes things about Victoria's Secret. So for me, it's really like an underwear. And I say underwear for the following reasons. It's more then um, it's more than, uh, than concepts. It's more than a process. It's more than mindset. So why, why do you use Lean, and how do you use Lean in a, in a journey, is when you do a journey, agile journey, less journey, is you will always have new questions to be answered based on your own environment, based, based on what's happening on today, and that you've nev never read before because it's not in a guide or whatsoever. In order to be able to answer that, to that new question, new situation, 
what you need to have is you need to be convinced about, okay, whatever the answer I will do, if I respect those elements, so I feel comfortable with the elements that I, I will put forward because I respect some basic principles, it will be fine. I cannot do anything wrong. And in worst case, okay, we'll change. That's okay. And that's, of course, everyone's uh, personal feeling, but for myself, not having any underwear would feel very odd to me to do a journey. So, thank you. <laughs> any question? If you would start uh, an agile transformation without knowing less and just using lean to transform, how close would you get to less? Um, so you already know that I've never read the, uh, <laughs> the Scrum Guide. Uh, so we did the agile transformation and started without knowing less. Um, and uh, the, uh, the, the first thing is uh, having this uh, lean background and understanding of lean. There are some, uh, some uh, fundamental uh, elements. Like I said, people, the learning component of the people is very important. Uh, having, you know, in, in, in Scrum, you have these uh, basic uh, mindset components, which is you need to be transparent. You need to be respectful with people. You need to be to do the teamwork. You need to accept some challenges and be courageous. All those elements are in lean. Huh? So it's, this is really applying lean principles. And then the rest, of course, lean is basically made for manufacturing. And so you should not read lean exactly the way it is. But the principle of just in time, let's reduce the lean time for delivery between my customer demand and what I can deliver. Uh, this is what you do in Scrum. And, and when someone says, OK, yeah, we do Scrum, but with four weeks sprints, you say, yeah, <laughs> why are you doing that? It's, it, this is usually two weeks, one week, ideally one day. But OK, that starts to be a bit uh, very hard. Uh, but I know that in some projects which were in crisis, we, we, we squeezed the sprint from two weeks to one week, just to be able to cope with the crisis situation. Yeah. My question. Was it already answered? My question about uh, I don't statement? remember. Oh, okay. So the, the team uh, the, you mentioned about uh, that uh, within Toyota, uh, people are encouraged or they're kind yeah. of are changing. Uh, the place and so the but unless we say exactly opposite uh, which is uh, stable teams and uh, long live teams uh, until they die so yes yes and no because you don't say opposite in less you say people needs to learn so of course you say ideally the team should stay the same but you also have the traveler you also have uh, this type of people that are going across the team and doing job rotation is a way to learn so I don't think it's opposite to less. It's just, yes, your team changed more often. So uh, org chart at Toyota changed all the time. But it's fine. Because the people coming in will bring new information. I can coach you on some elements, but you can also coach them, which is also important, that it goes two ways. So that the people that stays in the team receive information from the people that come from the outside, but that person from the outside also learn from the people from the team. Just follow up on the on the question: uh, How often uh, people change the to new role? Do you have any like? It's every three years in average, or is it every year on a job fair? That's uh, that's uh, there is no let's say if you are the same same place exactly the same job for more than three years, then then you should change. The rest. And it also depends how big is the change. Sometimes it's just switching a bit, and you keep some of the things you were doing before, and then you switch step by step. Sometimes it's a complete switch, where you have to do really and over, and then do something else. 
So you don't have, it really depends. But uh, you will not do major change every year because it makes no sense. Because then you don't have the time to learn. So ideally the time is three years. So for example, the, the, the new team member that joined my team is coming from manufacturing in Turkey, Toyota Manufacturing in Turkey. And he's just joined my team now. Um, so it's, it's really, and it's, for me, it's very interesting. I, n I never had someone from manufacturing in my team, and, uh, and he has a different background. So we will learn from each other. Uh, are they then given to you? Sorry? Is he given to you? No. Is it like, here you have somebody from manufacturing. No. And can, so how does that go as receiving end of the job rotation? So how, how it worked is uh, the, 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 the open position is, is just openly available within the Toyota network first. And, uh, and people can postulate to that, uh, to that position. And whoever can postulate to that position. And, and so what we do is we do like we do for, we do just some interviews. Uh, as then a hiring person, do you hire people who have right now the right skills for that position? Because I guess that would make the job rotation harder. The, uh, the question is in the answer. Obviously not. Uh, and, but, Oh, and that's, that's interesting because the, the real answer is not at all. And in fact, it's not the things we are looking at. Uh, we're looking at what that person can bring within the team that is not there yet, and that can be an added value. That that person is not, of course, if it's code development, it's another story. But in this case, it's not about code development. It's more about how to manage people and how to manage uh, uh, different uh, type of elements. So with a bit of experience in one area is good enough to go to another area. But also the personality of the person can bring something new in, inside the team. So it's really both things. So it's then already in the open position. Do you describe the personality characteristics or do you describe the skills that that person will need to learn when they rotate in this job? I describe the skills that the person will need to learn. And therefore, within Toyota, you're not uh, looking at the different uh, jobs, open job positions, with the idea of the skills that I yeah. have, but with the idea of yeah. the skills that you want to learn. And that's where the, the, the job fair are important. Because then that's where the people have the less... Uh, sometimes you have people that, that think, okay, that job is not for me. In fact, this is not true. And, uh, and that's where the... the if they're really interested, they will go and come and talk to you. And say, oh, I know, I don't have. But I have this type of background, and I'm really interested in doing that. And, uh, and sometimes it works out, sometimes not. Uh, but it's um, this element of, do I already know the job I will have to do? It's not really taken into consideration. But do I have the right background and this time assist? Yes, uh, we, we, still, we still take some of this in consideration. Sorry guys for asking all the questions. Uh, does that also mean that uh, for an internal job rotation there would be like a probation period to see whether this is working out so that they are swung back to where they came from if it didn't fit in the first couple of... You will love that, huh? No, it's not that. Huh? <laughs> so how would it work? <laughs> so if it's... I, I, well, I, in fact, I don't know because it, it's just joining now. So I, I will be able to tell you in a few months. Uh, but no, no, uh, more seriously. If it will not be uh, a fit, let's say, for certain reason, the first element we will put in place is enough is the coaching, is some training, is some helping with, with the team and try to identify where is, is strength that we can base ourselves to make it, uh, the person evolve to where we want. And if it doesn't work, okay, we change the role. That's it. We will, we will go with the person and try to identify a role which fits better. But what we will not do is to leave that person in... in the complete comfort zone, so in the complete element where it's used to do in the past. 
Okay, so you would say that the um, if a, a, a person wouldn't fit, then it's actually not the problem of the person, but of the hiring organization that got that person that will need to uh, either help that person grow yeah. or find if the person doesn't grow within that particular role or it turns out to be not a fit f to find a better place or role yeah. within their organization. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. I wish most organizations would do that. Any other question? Um, I still have one for the teams. So you said that it was not coding, so it's uh, some other work you are now seeking in your area? Uh, yes, true. Okay. So uh, yeah, just for your background. So mm -hmm. within within Toyota, I, in fact, we have uh, at least in our IT department, we have I think something like um, 75, 80 percent external companies working, and only uh, a reduced amount of people uh, internal. Mm -hmm. So in other areas of uh, Toyota, where you have more in-house own development and coding. Uh, is it the same that you say also there you would change every three years? So is this the same principle or is it so that there it would be more stable? Um, and that I will answer with, with something that I know, so with elements which are within my team and not Toyota employees. And uh, obviously there what we look for is stability. So uh, we look for having teams that are can come on long-term assignment within Toyota in a partnership with external companies so that we can keep them re relatively stable because you always have this knowledge switch. But what you also want to avoid is, uh, we, we've seen that, that notion before with a kind of uh, uh, technical mentor or uh, a person that owns so many skills that it becomes that you cannot replace that person anymore. And that we also want to avoid. So not to go to that point and try to have enough refreshment in the team so that uh, we can have new people also learning from, from others. It's always a risk that you take internal or external. It's always a risk. Uh, but you try to really keep this idea of, uh, of long-term uh, teams. Yeah. How do you um, pay, or what is um, the salary of uh, the people based on? Um, is it based on their function, role description that they are doing, or is it based on their potential as individuals? So, as an example, um, let's say let's say you take Bus, a great coach, right, um, and you let them do, or let him do. Um, some data entry into a database from paper to database, right? Uh, would him, what would that be? Would you, how, how does that look like? So it's two extremes, right? Would you pay yeah. him like a... So it's, uh, it's uh, okay. Uh, there is a kind of a grid. A grid is a kind of number that you receive. Uh, it's your grid from, from, one to, uh, from, from one to eight or one to nine. Um, and based on your grade, you are in a salary, uh, salary range. It's not based on the effective work you do. It's based on your grade. And the grade, how, how do you get kind of uh, promotion within grades? It's, um, it's not based on the activity you do, because that's more the bonus element, based on your yearly activity. It's based on your compliance to some uh, fundamental Toyota ways and values, so like challenges, like uh, respect, like all those, all those values are in fact part of your evaluation to, e to evaluate if you are capable to, to move to the next grade. That's not really based on your, the effective work you do. Does an agile coach or a scrum master in Toyota need to be a Lean Six Sigma? as well or how do those things relate to each other? Only if he has the belt with the sheriff things, otherwise I don't want to see the guy. Yeah? <laughs> 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 so, 
So no, of course not. If, if there's no more question, then I would like to ask the last hardest question. <laughs> they cut the mic, you know, <laughs> they just... <laughs> just too, too difficult, but... You have to take the other one, yeah. Hello? Hello? Okay. Uh, could you share with us a um, personal story of your, what is it, 16 years in Toyota? Yeah. Uh, where you say, you know, with this particular personal story, um, it shows how the company is a different company than others that I have experienced or I'm aware of? This is a difficult question, Bas. I told you, it's the last question for yeah. this conference also. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm thinking about one, one, one thing. Previously, in my my team, uh, there was there, so within within Toyota there was a guy uh, which was there for quite some times, and that uh, he received uh, the title of the best uh, employee of the month uh, when it was still existing. Um, so really, really uh, smart guy and, and good guy. And uh, because he was smart and good, his uh, management. And his team said, "Okay, no, no, but we should keep him. We should we should keep him in the same same area. He's doing good things there." And so that guy he stays at exactly the same place for 20 years. And uh, and suddenly, the company realized that uh, in fact this is, was so so wrong. And um, he was he was close to retirement and still close to retirement. We all believe that. Uh, it was a good idea to make him change. And uh, what I really appreciate from him is that he accepted that challenge. And it, was, it has been extremely difficult for him. Uh, but he did. he did. He did accept the change. He did some very good things. Uh, also for some things which were not so good. But uh, seeing the, um, let's say, the, the environment which was there and... Uh, it was so other companies would have said, "This guy, that system stops. We don't need him out." Oh, we still have few few years time before we no out. We don't need the guy. And there it was more, no. Let's keep a challenge together. We know it will be difficult. We know it's hard. And you could say, "How will you invest in someone that you know will leave your company in three years?" But still do it. Because we believe that it's more important than having the people leaving the company. 